back to the cancha. And if we thought match day two couldn't be any better, now we have match day three, throwing out all the surprises, team lo- teams losing, but still qualifying. Dramatic twist. It almost happened for Costa Rica, but it didn't. And that's where we're going to start because that was, I, for my money, the craziest ending to a World Cup group. <laughs> right, Oscar? Yeah, this group was on steroids. It was just amazing how... It was just flipping every with every goal, with every minute. You know, all four teams having hope. And then at the end of the day, even those that got through were like, you know, pretty ragged and everything because of all the stress. Yeah, it was. And, and it started well for the Spaniards when Morata got his first goal. You thought, okay, things are going smoothly. They don't have to worry about anything. They're going to go through, but... In the second half, we saw Japan doing what they did to Germany. Yeah. Even so, after the goal and after like the first 20 minutes of Spain, they kind of started taking it too easy for my liking. And like we said, in the second half, in the exact same stadium, Japan did what they did again and made the group really interesting. And, yeah. you know, like you said, Costa Rica also added to the chaos. Yeah, they also did. They also did. I'm going to stab you in the heart here, and I'm going to point out one Spanish player who hasn't really covered himself in glory in the last week, and that's Alejandro Balde. Do you mm-hmm. think it's pain for his lack of experience? Yes. I, I feel like all of the goals Spain have considered have unfortunately come when he <laughs> and Carvajal have been on the pitch. I'm going to say both of them because there's no agenda here, but... Yeah, he a lot of mistakes from his side have led to goals. So I think, you know, maybe he's getting too excited and needs to calm down a bit. But still, it's kind of hard to just pin everything on him. I mean, Spain yeah. are true. So yeah, they're true, and and we have to talk about Japan because this is such an achievement to beat Germany, to beat Spain. Um, we're talking about teams that won the World Cup in 2010 and 2014. It's mouth watering. Like, even though you say Spain and Germany, they might be on their way down, but this is outstanding from an Asian team. Yeah, it is. There's no way about it. They really played the game, played their cards well in both games, just really coming for both teams in the second half. And like you said, it's an amazing achievement to finish first in this group when nobody gave them a prayer at all. Yeah, nobody gave them a prayer. And What do they do that's so different that other, let's say, smaller nations can, or Japan's a big country, but like uh, in terms of smaller football nations can adopt Mm -hmm. in the next World Cup or or what can they do that going forward to help them against Croatia? Basically, do what you've been doing, like play the game in sections. If if you get to the end of the first half and you're still close to the opposition, in second half, just go for them. Like the the sudden change of approach can be very confusing because at the end of the day, these footballers are human beings. They'll be like, wait, why are you attacking us now? You weren't doing this before. (laughs) So yeah, it can come as a shock. And also Japan, when it comes to defending, they really, to be, for those who watch anime, they really blue locked the defense. <laughs> it was pretty like it was like watching Cardis in their prime. Like there was no way there was no way Spain could score that goal. No yeah, there was there was no space at all. It was a definite blue lock with the blue uniforms and everything. And like, yeah, it's like just just amazing defensive resilience. Gonda was pretty good when he got called upon. Yeah. Yeah. At yeah. the end of the day, Spain, you know, they made too many changes. I kind of took this match for granted with so many changes and it co- almost cost them a World Cup knockout space, which we wouldn't have said to on the last match day. And did, did your lack of reaction, is that symptomatic of a problem we had about them going into this World Cup, about the fact that in previous tournaments, they've lacked that attacking threat, they've lacked that goal like they've only scored two in the last two games. Granted, they scored seven in the first one, but when things have gotten tougher for Spain, it seems like that lack of goal, that lack of creativity, that lack of doing something different is going to affect them. Uh, well, 
in the last game, it was against Germany, so I, we can kind of excuse them for that. But today, it was like, yeah, just, a lot, sorry, yesterday, or this yeah. match, it was just, you know, not encouraging going to the last 16 against a team that has the best, def- one of the best defensive records in the tournament so far. So yeah. definitely solutions need to be made. I feel like Luis Enrique hasn't, he still needs to find a front street that will give him enough consistency. And yeah, like I said, I don't think he started the right song, the right players in the first place. So all these yeah. things put together, I just hope they get their act together for Morocco. Yeah, they, they really have to. And I, I just want to praise Japan again because although I really want to Spain to like to win that game or get a result, like the way they defended in that second half was outstanding. The way yeah. they closed down all the spaces, they, it was it was really nice to see. Like sometimes people say defensive football is boring, but when you see a team that, that that's that organized, that's that coordinated, it's something glorious. Yeah. Yeah. And is that going? You are? Go on, go on, then talk. Yeah, Mikhail had an antidote about Japan, about seeing them in the U.S. and in, in a friendly against the U.S. And Mikhail, tell me about tell tell the listeners about that antidote, about how they played and how they translated that playing style to the World Cup. Oh, uh, essentially, they played a friendly where the U.S. they were missing Yunus Musa and like um one of their center backs who's a decent passer of the ball, but those first 20 minutes were like just a complete blitz. It's kind of like um, like that Barcelona Arsenal game from like years ago in the Champions League where, yeah, yeah it was just one of those where they're just, just able to just ob- like, just press like a bunch of like worker bees or something. It's pretty <laughs> impressive. Yeah, uh, particularly it, in this Germany, in this Germany and Spain game, what the shift in momentum essentially where it's, almost like they're kind of there defensively solid and organized. Oscar kind of just pretty much said this earlier, but then there's like a, just a flick of the switch where they're all just collectively just chasing you. It's, I mean, that's yeah. tough to deal with. And it's something that they've been just that um, they've just done spectacularly thus far. Yeah, they really have. And what about Costa Rica? I know they went out, but did, what they've shown in the last two games, did that really impress you? The fact that Spain were going out for three to five minutes <laughs> during that <laughs> time period. <laughs> yeah, since that first game, um, there's definitely uh, a lot of ridicule, I guess, that was headed their way due to that result with Spain. But the, I mean, to get a result against Japan, which we've seen, it's just, pretty impressive and then the germany game they were they were with them for the i think what first 60 70 ish minutes and honestly were you know a few minutes there they were um on the verge of finishing second in that group so um they should be proud of themselves despite obviously losing this third game and then the embarrassment of the first game from their perspective but yeah yeah they should be but what about the germans though They've gone out in the group stage for the second time in the World Cup. Yeah, that's back back. It's a bit of a disaster from 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 their end. In in a way, I think everything just kind of goes to that first game essentially for yeah. really not finishing chances they should have finished. I don't know. I mean, expected goals I, for what that is is like a statistic. I think they finished yeah. with like close to three or four for wow. that game, which is quite high. Um, But, you know, drawing Spain and then getting a result on Costa Rica in those next two games, four points there, that first game really is perhaps what they'd be uh, regretting. Yeah, they'll be regretting. And also the controversial point in the Spain-Japan game was the decision considering Japan's second goal because that ultimately knocked out the Germans eventually. And I want to get everyone's opinion on this. Do you think that was a valid goal and starting with you Mikhail. yeah i think it is i mean my basis is just on those pictures that i think most of us have seen on twitter where it's kind of directly above 
It's kind of, uh, you know, we see it all the time when players are taking corner kicks, how they put the ball just over the edge of the line. And like from that camera view, you can see like the, the green shade of the grass rather than the white. Yeah. So just, it's, it's a question of angles, I think. And based off of that, I think it's valid. Yeah. Lumi? Yeah, I would also say it's valid as well. Um, I think the particular angle on Twitter that was um, being, I think BBC, you know, tweeted was sort of from, was inclined in a way. It wasn't directly like over the ball because they say, you know, the whole of the ball has to cross the whole of the, of the line, right? Yeah. So it's vertically above. But if you look at it from an angle, you could see it looks like, oh yeah, the ball has fully crossed the line. But, you know, the same with like, you know, goal line technology, it's from directly above. So, you know, the white line vertically above. So I agree. It was a um it was a goal. It should have stood and I'm glad it did. Yeah. Oscar, your final one. After seeing the angle that was directly on top of the ball, I finally say it stood. It <laughs> should have stood. Yeah. Yeah, it should have and stood. given like um Lumi and Mikhail have said how we treat balls that are corners and balls that go over the line, the goal line itself, then yeah, it should it should have stood and did stood stand soon. Yeah. Yeah. It really did stand. And that means that Japan finished top of the group and their opponents in the quarterfinal was going to be Croatia, who drew against Belgium. It was a zero zero game. Um Oscar Lukaku got a lot of uh, abuse after the game. <laughs> Rakitic was like freezing him <laughs> for missing all those chances. Uh, how big of a disappointment has this been for Belgium? Because, um, and especially for Roberto Martinez, has this tainted his, um, like, has this tainted the way people view him, his career and stuff? Uh, I guess it can, but I feel the thing compared to other teams that have gone out, I don't feel it's that disappointing that Belgium have gone because. Loki, we kind of expected it because this team was very good four years ago and probably should have won the World Cup. But now, a lot of that 11 or the squad are shadows of their former selves. Lukaku wasn't fit throughout the tournament. He had he tried to make a heroic stand to get Belgian through, but was just not able to do it. So, yeah, I feel like their time passed and right now we're seeing right now we basically saw the end of this golden generation yes yeah, the end of the golden generation but in the future we're going to see croatia versus japan and how do you see that going am i allowed to predict anymore after my Croatia oh, this week oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can give it over to a limited now no, no, just try um i feel like japan we're going to are going to do the same thing they did against Germany and Spain, which is they're going to see how the first half goes, test Croatia, and let Croatia come on to them. If they need to in the second half, they can always flick from being a very defensive team to a very, very front foot team. So we'll have to see. And we also have to see how Croatia approach this game to them because they'll look at the feats Japan have achieved in this tournament and would not underestimate them at all. Yeah, they definitely will not meet them. And what about Morocco? Like, how do you see that going against Spain? Uh, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> You're really scared of Yusuf Benasiri. Okay, when you put it that way. Okay, I'm scared of Spain's inability to not turn up. That's what I'm more worried about. Because yeah. if, he, if he doesn't pick the right set of players for this kind of defense... This game will probably go to extra time and penalties because, like you said, it's Yusuf and <laughs> That yeah, will probably come back to bite us, won't it? But in any in in any case, he he did get a goal against Canada, so yeah. they should Spain should. I mean, the defenders will know him being from Sevilla and everything. So, I feel this game is going to come down to how Spain can create, how much Spain can create against this very good Morocco defense that's only considered an on goal all tournament. So uh, it should be a pretty close game. Yeah. Mikhail, to give us a less biased perspective, because we're both players for Spain, um, 
what, how, how do you think Morocco can win this game if you're a Moroccan manager? That's a good question. Um, I think it's honestly just playing more or less how they've been playing thus far. I mean, they've gotten, you know, to get what? So essentially from their perspective, the first game was against last year, last, you know, times finalists a result against last time semi-finalist and then a result against Canada. That's, I mean, uh, that's pretty impressive. The thing is they'll have the, the home support, which we've seen yeah. has just been kind of bonkers, like in terms of just generating noise and whatnot. But um, yeah, essentially just relying on like some of the, the pace that they've been having with their fullbacks. And then Gia has been getting into very good places. Um, throughout the course of the three games where he's been able to like create opportunities thus far. Yeah. And Sofian Buffal too is like really, he has a really good um, foot and he's been also dazzling a bit in this tournament. Yes, he has indeed. That's the name I yeah. forgot about for sure. I share for Kevin. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be, it's not going to be a joke on Tuesday. <laughs> and there's also Akini and stuff. And the fact that both countries are so close, it makes it almost like a mini derby in, in terms of geography. Mm -hmm. uh, but Macau, a word on Canada, um, they went out with zero points, but they did score two goals in the World Cup. Is this a step in the right direction for the Canadian national team? Yeah, certainly it's a step. Um, four years from now, they'll be at home. Um, their young players will be a bit older as well. So maybe they might be, with hindsight, seeing this essentially as just a stepping stone, essentially, where it's getting all the the nervousness um, out of the way, perhaps, from their end. But yeah. also, based off of games, they'll look toward more towards that first game with Belgium, as opposed to, definitely as opposed to the Croatia game after 20 minutes, and some yeah. of the Morocco game as well. Yeah, and let's move on to the other interesting group we saw in match day three, where those are Plenty of more ball. There's plenty of hatred, revenge going on in this game. Uruguay, they almost made it through, but it seems like Ghana did sort of lose, but get the last laugh, didn't say it, Oscar. Yeah, it was it was it was like Uruguay were in control of everything for most of it. But then when results elsewhere didn't go their way, Ghana were like, okay. So you've been frustrating us for this whole second half. Now it's our turn. <laughs> yeah, it was because of that whole thing, like that kind of perceived pettiness I got. I just thought it was really hilarious. Yeah, it was really nice thing. Makara for Uruguay, this, this has to be a failure by Diego Alonso. Yeah, it's, it, it'll be seen as a failure for sure. Um, I guess heading into this game, there were some issues with some of the the key players essentially the old guard I think Cavani mentioned yeah. he was asked the question and kind of said why don't you ask uh, like Diego Alonso or something um, so yeah I think kind of similar to the Germany game it's where you if you don't get results in that like first game where you kind of are willing to concede for a draw then despite what happens in your second game and third game in this case where they won right it's yeah. like you know you're hurt from what you didn't do prior yeah they, they really were and i also feel like you're right that this is also a change of the guard because suarez and um cavani they're both over the hill in terms of their career cavani plays in Valencia, but like he's definitely over the hill um mm -hmm. suarez plays in i believe he played in national before the world cup and he had such a poor season before he left so you're right definitely need that sort of transition period and it doesn't seem like darwin Nunez has really stepped into that role where what's expected of him in terms of scoring goals in terms of delivery for his country like the strikers before him like Forlan, suarez and cavani mm -hmm. as of yet that'll be a hope for them to um yeah. to get some something from him i guess in the next yeah. few years Sure, and Olimde has a has something to say on Cavani or Darwin Nunez. Yeah, the, the only thing I wanted to add is 
are they the only strike force that didn't score a goal in this World Cup? Uh, no, Uruguay scored two. Um, they scored. Oh, oh, as a strike force, I think so. Yeah, like that strike, strike, strike. Yeah, yeah. three man strike force that didn't score a goal. Yeah. In this World Cup, it, it might be a strange stat, but I think I'm fairly accurate in that assumption. I don't know. Yeah, and since we're on topic of that group, let's talk about Portugal. They, how did they lose to Korea? Was was that more of South Korea just? being energetic in Portugal, playing with more of the reserves? I mean, yeah, they did rest some of the key players in midfield. Um, and I expected Ronaldo to play um, because he's still you know, trying to chase something like make himself more of a historic player in that regard. He had a poor performance by his standard, I would say. Um, they didn't offer a lot going forward. I still don't understand who was it that was playing left midfield for them. Jal, um, Jal Mario. I'm like, how does yeah. Rafael Leal not start a game for them? It's crazy. I'm still a very upset about that. Like, yeah, I thought he would have definitely started today, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, Ronaldo was poor today. Uh, I think I don't even know what he was doing on the goal that they conceded the first one because it's like. You know, I, I, the ball wasn't coming so fast at him that I thought he needed to, like, duck. But then he ducked away, you know, like, it, again, it was very weird. And, uh, yeah, it led to that goal. And I think, yeah, South, South Korea just wanted it more. Um, they were hungrier and they, they knew the, the impact that that, you know, goal would have for them. I thought, you know, Ghana also <laughs> come with that same sort of drive. <laughs> Once that penalty missed, I think everyone, like all the Ghanaian players, just kind of their hearts sort of sunk in, the, in a sense. Yeah. It was, it yeah. just knocked the winds out of their sails. Yeah, it's supposed um, to be nightmares from 2010. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. say my, so far for me, one of these standout players has been um, um, Kudus for Ghana. I, I expect him to have a big money move after this, like this come January, you know transfer one and stuff. Yeah. And it was good as Champions League as well. He scored a bunch of like really important goals for Ajax. But the Champions League is a long way away. January has been in those a month away. But let's talk about the future, the near future, Portugal, South Korea. Portugal has Switzerland, South Korea, Brazil. Given how crazy this World Cup is, what are the chances that South Korea beats Brazil and Portugal loses to Switzerland? I'm telling you, they're very high. They're higher than we all speak. <laughs> okay. I don't... And Switzerland beating Portugal, given Switzerland's track record in knockout rounds recently because they took Spain to penalties and beat France. Yeah. It's possible. It's more possible than South Korea beating Brazil, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it could be wrong. Eliminate, what do you think about your, your Portuguese boys? Do you think they're ready to face the Yan Summer test. I think there are definitely goals in the game. Um, I think it's just going to be who can show the defense, who can play a better defensive performance on on the day. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely goes. Um, I think it's a toss up. So, I, I do want Portugal to win. But, yeah, I can, like um, Oscar, what Oscar said, it's something where, you know, if Switzerland frustrate Portugal long enough, take it to extra time, you don't know, you know some mistake at the back that Joao Cancelo can kind of do every now and again. I mean, he's an amazing fullback, but he can be caught, you know, out of positions, oftentimes too attacking. So those sort of kind of, you know, um, shortcomings kind of before them and then, you know, Switzerland capitalize and <laughs> we're looking at a very different outlook. Um, as for South Korea, I don't, I don't know. I feel like they they maybe have used all their like energy to get past and to get through just now and like keeping Portugal. I know Portugal didn't offer much like against them in the last group game, but Brazil, you know, with most of their players rested for the next game, would definitely pepper them like left, right, and center. Yeah, I think yeah. definitely. Well, I, I I would agree with that analysis. And I'm going to come to you, Oscar, with uh, Switzerland, because 
we had a disagreement between who we thought was going to go through. You were right. You thought Switzerland would go through. I thought Serbia might go through. And I was very happy when Mitrovic and Blaovic finally started together. And I was like, you know what? See, they start together. They score. They both score. But Switzerland, boy, did they turn things around in that second half. Yeah, two beautiful team goals to get the win ultimately and to go through because that's what Switzerland do. Even though they didn't have the God and Summer, they still have a they still have an experienced enough core that has been through a couple of tournaments together. They had Shakiri. Shakiri, he since he's been playing regularly at Chicago Fire, he's he's he show, had a better showing so far than in Euro 2020. Embolo, you know, really important. Vargas, Jaka, Freuler, you know, pretty, very, very solid team that will, that's very capable of frustrating most teams in this tournament. So, yeah, it's, you know, good that I was right, ultimately. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure, I'm sure the Albanians as well celebrated this win against Serbia. Uh, <laughs> let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the less politics, the better. Uh, Mikhail, Brazil, Cameroon got that win against Brazil, um, a limited Brazil side. Is it, is that something like the Cameroonians could take for future World Cups and like, yeah, we beat Brazil, so maybe that's a uh, shot in our armor for ourselves? Oh, definitely. I mean, they'll be hoping on the fact that Brazil end up to win this competition now, just for <laughs> for some bragging rights. But yeah, the, I mean, they they played well. Again, the, let's not forget this. Despite it being a second string Brazil team, I mean, this that Brazil team is good enough to like win a World Cup by if it if it if it was a, its own country essentially with the players that they had. Yeah. And what can stop this Brazil side? Because uh, maybe they're left backs because they don't have any at the moment. Yeah, that's certainly an issue leading into these knockout stages. I'm not sure what the situation, like how bad of an injury um, both um, Sandro and Teos has at the moment. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely something Chiche is going to be worrying about for sure. Yeah, it's definitely something he will worry about. But do you have faith in this Brazil team that they can finally do it? They can finally conquer the World Cup after all these expectations they've had since 2006 and they've fallen short? Yeah, I believe so. Um, yeah. So in the first two games against Serbia and Switzerland, they didn't concede a shot on target, which is pretty impressive when you consider you know Brazil are known to be this just a attacking juggernaut but defensively history tells us in the knockout stages not conceding goals is actually extremely extremely important so it's something they can take away hopefully yeah and we might have a special South American semi-final if things go the way the football gods want it to be or not given Argentina they did it against Poland. Oscar, here's your two minutes of glory to go on about how great Argentina were in that game. I think it worked out for you because Lewandowski went through. Yeah. The boy Messi well, went through. So let, let the people have it. Um, first of all, Messi, why did you miss that penalty and make my, my stress worse? Second of all, um, Poland were just Poland just really relied on Chesney throughout this group stage and Chesney was really brilliant I'm not praising Argentina yet because I feel like we need to get into Poland a bit because they really flirted with danger a lot in that game yeah. and had to rely on Argentina just deciding to pity them and say let them go through but for an Argentina perspective you know it's they kept their promise to the fans. They said after the Saudi Arabia game, we won't let you guys down, and they did it. You know, Enzo Fernandez, Julian Alvarez, and McAllister, they all came up clutch. And it's good from Messi's point of view that he has that supporting cast, you know, because he's not he's a human being at the end of the day, he can miss penalties sometimes, but you know, having good 
strength and goals from all over the team will help Argentina. And the fact that they've kept two clean sheets in a row, like we said, defensively, being good defensively is going to be helpful going forward in this tournament. So I feel that will be their big strength in the days to come. Yeah, it will be. And also give Scaloni a bit of praise here because he makes the big decisions to bring in McAllister to the team. It works mm-hmm. out well. He keeps him there. He brings on Enzo Fernandez into the starting lineup. He gets an assist. He mm-hmm. also brings on, I believe Enzo gets two assists, or um, I may be wrong. No, now all gets the first assist. But he yeah. brings on um, Julian Alvarez for the place of Lautaro because we discussed on the air that Lautaro wasn't really performing. And mm-hmm. Alvarez gets their important second goal, like that shows a bit of uh, superior man management, I feel, from Scaloni and the ability to select the right players, which is, I feel it's underrated in football. Yeah, it's a very underrated trait. Like you said, some managers, they get sucked because they don't pick the right players or they have blind faith in certain players like uh, Roberto Martinez could be accused of. But yeah, Scaloni, he, what has helped Argentina is that from the first game, we saw some players were not up to it and he immediately made those changes and it's worked out. So we, like I said, we have to give him credit. Yeah, but do you think they can shot by Australia? I mean, it's, nothing is impossible. So, yeah. I mean, I'll put my heart out and say of the games, that there's most likely going to be a shock. This is probably as low as Brazil, South Korea in that <laughs> regard, but I could be wrong. So yeah. let's see. Yeah, but all credits to all credits to Australia because they also they were shocked in this tournament. You predicted last week that they were going to go through. They went through. Can you remind listeners of why you predicted that result? It was. Admittedly, it was more down to the fact that I felt I was so disappointed by Denmark against Tunisia and somewhat against France that I was like, there's no way. And then also, I just liked how Australia, even though they got battered by France, had a positive approach against them and were able to have something to hold on to. Because I felt like having something to hold on to was going to be an advantage this week. Unfortunately, it was only an advantage for Australia. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Uh, and Olimide, do you think Australia can do it against Argentina? It, it would take some Herculean efforts from from that players to, you know, frustrate the Argentinian attack. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see them sort of, you know, lasting long per se. Um, I was going to make a response to uh, Oscar's quote earlier about, I think he said Brazil, South Korea is the one that has the biggest gap or most unlikely for anything to happen. Is that correct? I didn't say most unlikely. I was like, both these games have the least, how do I put it? I was like, there's there's more likely to be a shock in Morocco, Spain than in those two games. Because Morocco's level is closer to Spain than Australia's is to Argentina, if you got any. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, the biggest, at least in terms of performance in the World Cup so far, um, France, Poland is probably the one that's, like, yeah, sure. two different, like, extreme. Because, yeah. yeah. Because of, like we said, Poland's completely negative attitude against yeah. Argentina. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, France would be like rubbing their hands against Poland. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. think I'm going to watch that game. I'm just going to, you know, tune the, into the early games in general. Oh, come the on. Only, you're, a, you're a France guy. You have to watch it. The only uh, team out that would give Poland their prayer is the fact that France are not that ball dominant like Argentina and some other countries, where they, whereas France would probably try to invite Poland down to them and just kill them on the break. Yeah, but can you imagine Krakowiak trying to do something against the French midfield? <laughs> or Glick trying to stop Mbappe. <laughs> I mean, they were former teammates, so he might know how to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The best hope is Lewandowski finally scores a penalty. 
because he hasn't scored one in a while. And well, Poland has... have to attack to get a penalty. But that's the <laughs> issue. <laughs> yeah, they really do, and like they haven't like to be fair to Poland. Poland haven't really been impressive, but I don't feel the rest of the teams in this group have been that like impressive. So far, Saudi Arabia, they did well in the first game, but since then, they've sort of boiled out. I'll say they tried against Poland, but against Mexico. I didn't really watch the Mexico game like that, but from what I heard, Mexico are really giving it their all until they couldn't. Yeah. So. Yeah, and Mikhail, what, what do you think about the Mexican performance in the World Cup so far? Because they were a goal or two away from going through. Um, I mean, this is the first time they haven't made the round of 16 in a long time. I'm not sure specifically which year, but yeah, the Mexican press are pretty upset just due to that stat, essentially. And they should probably feel that they should have been good enough to get through, despite not really showing much in the first game and you know the second game they just clearly were not even trying to score just get a get a draw against Argentina but yeah overall it'll be a lot of disappointment yeah it, it really will be and I mean, I'm going to come back to you talk about France and you're you're confident they did, they're going to get past Poland but do you think the ideal game do you think maybe if they come up against a Senegal or England do you think they have what it takes to get to the semi-final and the final and I need to match up the expectation of people have of them. Yeah, I think France are definitely, you know, I think with Brazil, you know, like at least in my opinion, well, actually after Portugal, because I want Portugal to win. <laughs> but I think the general consensus from everyone is like, well, you know, France, Brazil are like the two strongest teams in the tournament, um, at least at the start, and I think even up to now. So I think England as well, like, I don't see, again, you don't see inconsistencies with, like, a USA where, you know, they, they should have or could have, you know, just done more and USA actually deserve to win that game. You know, I say all this and, you know, what well, France still lost the game, you know, so that's, you know, what, 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 what does that count for? But, you know, they rest, rested most of their players and everything like that, so... I don't know. I just feel like my, France has more That's match more winners on, on their squads. You know, like, um, yeah, there's different, different makers, difference makers around the pitch that I think would be a tough matchup for, you know, English players, which I, my bet is England beats Senegal, but it might be closer than people think. Yeah. And even after England's 3 0 victory over Wills, you're still confident that. England, they, they can match up to France. They will try. I think. Um, hmm, have they, I'm trying to think from just from the recent games. They seem to be relatively sluggish at the start of the game. I mean, disregarding the Iran game, but on the Iran game. Um, yeah, still, I still France. I think France to go through. You know. Um, well, it will be an interesting game to watch, definitely. Yeah, it definitely will be. And I'm going to pass it over to Mikhail because we're going to discuss the USA. They, they, made it, they made it through. Mikhail, how does it feel to be an American today? <laughs> it feels okay. Ask me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, were you surprised at all by this result? Because in last week, you made a prediction that Iran would go through, but both like Captain America. Yeah, I thought they'd have trouble breaking Iran down, but a combination of just their pressing meant the ball was just in Iran's half the entire time, which they were able to just circulate a lot of opportunities. Um, they opted for overloading on the right-hand side with Des Musa. They, Musa switched sides this game. And uh, Timothy Weah, which three are pretty good players. So, yeah, um, it's Pretty surprising, I think, that they managed to get out of the group and how decent they've been yeah, thus and, far. And people think maybe they can even get to the quarterfinals because the Dutch aren't playing as well. 
we should at least. Yeah, they should certainly feel so. I mean, even just despite their opposition, um, for them not to have like lost a game and perhaps only play bad really in one half against Wales, um, they should be confident. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Dutch are, despite the, I mean, they've been perhaps not a, as great as they would like to be, I guess. Yeah. Um, I know obviously Dutch fans are kind of upset with like Louis van Gaal's approach where it's much more conservative, shall we say. So. And do you feel this is a big win for Greg Berhalter because when he came to the position, people were doubting him. They were wondering whether it was the right choice, but do you feel he's won over most of the American media and as well as his players? Um, I don't think he's won over the media because I think there's still a lot of people that have shifted um, their anger towards him about Giovanni Reyna not getting much play time. However, uh, in the three group games, I mean, he shifted his tactics in each game. First game is like a very high press. Second game, sort of like a mid block, make sure England don't. Um, get into those half spaces areas whilst counterattacking for the first time in like a year or two. And then the third game, kind of a combination of the high press, good technical passing and stuff. So, I mean, I think he's done enough for him to get a new contract, but. Yeah, we shall see. And Oscar, you what's your opinions on Greg Berhalter? Uh, no, I was going to talk about the Dutch and USA because I feel USA have even more of a reason to be confident because apparently there's been some flu in the Dutch camp, so we may not even see a proper lineup tomorrow. So who knows? Yeah. It's that time of the year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but on the Dutch, like if the Dutch are to win it, where do you think the game would be won, Oscar? Uh, the, if the Dutch are to win it, they have to stop their silly passing that just results in a lot of turnovers because USA have players that are really good at, you know, taking advantage of these turnovers. You have Yunus Musa, Dest, like Timothy Weah, Pulisic, guys that really drive forward. So they have to be careful there. Also, I feel... The longer the Dutch are in this time, and the more they're going to really need Memphis Depay back at his best. I know he's like coming back slowly, but they'll definitely need him to add to what Gakpo and others are doing. And yeah, I feel basically the Dutch need to control this game as much as possible and not have it be in a chaotic state. Yeah, not have it be a chaotic state. And let's wrap it up with Senegal, the group stage for Senegal, because they also made it through. Obviously, say, Made through Senegal as a player, and now he's done it as a manager. And how impressive is what Senegal have done, given the fact that they didn't have money and they still finished second in this group? Oscar? Yes, given the circumstances regarding money and everything, it's an incredible achievement to go through. You know, um, yeah, Koulibaly stepping up big time as the captain against Ecuador. So, yeah, that kind of win will really give them a lot of confidence that they can do it against England. Also, the fact that they played against Netherlands and though they lost 2 0, the performance was largely positive. So, yeah, Senegal have every right to be pretty optimistic. Though I don't think they'll beat England, I think they'll definitely make it difficult. No, definitely make it difficult. Uh, and Olympia, you've already given us your opinion. You don't think Senegal will beat England. Uh, Mikhail, if I see Senegal's chances. Um, <laughs> no, I think it's yeah. slim. They, um, I'm not sure if it was mentioned, but um, one of their best performers, I think, won't be able to play due to yellow card accumulation in uh, Gay center midfielder, which is a pretty big loss, I think. Yeah, that'd be a huge loss. That'd be a huge loss. I, I wonder if uh, our boy from La Liga, Papi Sisk, 
can be said. Uh, but <laughs> to introduce himself to the world. After, lo after locking up Busquets, Frankie, and Pedri in one game. Yeah, uh, he's, he, he, he's he has lost a pass yeah. yeah, but he has it in him to replace Gay. So okay. we'll see. Yeah, and, and Bule D uh, as well. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And and now that we're that concludes our wrap up for the group, I guess we have to give our predictions on who's going to be the a quarter finalist, starting with Olumide. <laughs> a quarter finalist. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> uh, I will say. So I'll just go through the order in which I think they are playing. Netherlands, USA. Hmm. USA. Okay. Uh, um, Argentina. Um. Then France, then England, then the shock here for me, Japan, mm. then Brazil, then Spain, then Portugal. So my two shocks of the round technically are probably Japan, Japan and USA. Japan and USA. Do you differ from that, Oscar? <sighs> And given what I heard, what we've heard about the Dutch not having a flu outbreak, I'll say USA, Argentina, Japan. I think they'll do it again. <laughs> Brazil, France, England, Portugal. <sighs> And then the elephant in the room. <laughs> you know what? Spain's last performance didn't impress me a lot. So I don't oh, know. It's going to be a big one. Morocco. Morocco. Oh, man. <sighs> uh, I, wow. hope <laughs> I, ho I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. You're doing the reverse thing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually worried about Spain. I, I'm not even joking. Uh, no, no. You're doing that thing where. <laughs> no, like, no, 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 no. Like, you know, they did terribly. So if they win, you're like, yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm basically it's a win, making it's my a win expectation. For him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, spin. Find out where spin. <laughs> uh, spin in extra time because they love making life difficult for themselves. Is that so hard? Yeah, it's still your chest, you know. Okay, spin. <laughs> spin to win the whole tournament. That's with my chest, right? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let, one game at a time. Spin. Spain. Mikhail. So the only shock would be USC, I guess. Mikhail, do you think um, Spain will go out? Uh, I actually, I actually think it's pretty close. I I think Spain might just about cross the finish line though. Yeah. Um, but starting from the bottom, I actually think Switzerland will get the result against Portugal. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually um, agree with you. You know. Oh, do you? Okay. If, if Jan Summer is fit to play, I would say yes. Summer, they're all Switzerland are pretty organized as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think it's horrible that they only their only loss was against Brazil. That was like in the 90th, 80th minute or something. Yeah, yeah, it's a late finish as well. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a special time. finish. Yeah, so Spain, I think England will get by Senegal. I think France will get by Poland quite easily. Um, Brazil, I think, will beat South Korea. Yeah, I'm agreeing with everyone else here. I think Japan are actually going to beat Croatia. I don't even think it's going to be that big of a shock, perhaps. They've just been so impressive against two just juggernauts. Um, I, I think I've been past the quarterfinals in the World Cup of Japan. Um, no, this will probably be the first time. No, it's your first time. 
Wow. Also, who would have predicted more Asian teams in the <laughs> knockout stage than South American teams? Yeah, that was, uh, that, that, that was just was mental. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I think Argentina and then uh, let's say Netherlands. Oh, you're uh, yeah, doing that you're tonight. Doing you're doing <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> but, but I'm not trying to do the double jinx. I'm genuinely worried that so, someone like Asensio just mess up or something. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying Asensio because they Real Madrid player, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I can't leave my bias out all the time. It's what it's what it is. <laughs> As well. What about you, Taj? Oh, with your chest. With your chest. Oh, yours. with my chest. <laughs> I, 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 I think I, I, I'm with Macau. I think Switzerland might knock out Portugal. I just, I just feel they're the type of team that would get something over Portugal. Uh, Morocco, Spain. I, I think Spain. I think Spain would have Morocco. I, I think so, but I, I do feel Morocco would make things very difficult. Mm-hmm. You seen Bono would have one of the games of his life and he would get super abused when oh if, god I forgot about <laughs> him if Morocco knocks out Spain uh, France Poland I'll go with France England Senegal I actually think this would be closer than a lot of people think because Senegal they have very good players they have obviously Koulibaly at the back but you can't go against England they're, they're so they have, they just have so much firepower um, I'm gonna go against the grain with Croatia Japan and go with Croatia uh, just because I believe in Lukita Modric and that midfield three and what they did against Canada, I think they can maybe replicate it. But I do think it'll be tough uh, for them. I think Brazil, Korea, Brazil is going to go through. Olinda, do you have questions about my Korea, Croatia pick? Yeah, the Croatia pick, because I just feel, you know, Japan have been tested way more, right? Like they face yeah. more quality opponents and have come out the other side looking, you know, quite distinguished you know, in terms of their performance. So that's why I feel it's a, like picking Croatia is actually not the, you know, like informed pick for this. I, yeah, I would agree with you in that like Japan, they, they played against bigger style teams than Croatia have. The only place where I, I can see Croatia doing better than those teams is that I feel those teams are very possession based and mm-hmm. Japan suits that because they were able to like defend deep they were able to really pressurize them but i feel with croatia i feel maybe they have the skill sets to make it a more um end-to-end game than spain or germany would have and that's why i don't know maybe just to be contrarian and to like be like i got it right, <laughs> right? but so I, I and i, I like croatia too so <laughs> i don't scared to stay and get to them if they finish talk. Argentina, Australia. I think Argentina. You have to go to Argentina at this point. It's like, look at look at their path to the final, man. It's like they got they got the gift from God. D- dangerously prepared. For <laughs> dangerously <this>. prepared. <laughs> <laughs> As I've said, uh, Netherlands, USA. I can't believe I'm saying this, but USA, man. USA, they're gonna do it. And they're going to shock the world, and America is going to be the center of all things soccer, not football, soccer. <laughs> It's called soccer. It's called soccer. <laughs> not until not after Saturday. It won't. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't make that comment about USA shocking the world, now they're gonna lose. Like if you literally <laughs> just said everything you said, but then not that. Far. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, you've cost yes, you've cost USA. I know, but, man. It, it, but it, but, it, but they, they don't have a good chance because another. I I'm just looking if they follow the blueprint of Ecuador. They definitely have a chance. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have a chance. And before we wrap up, guys, who do you, who do you guys think was the standout team? Obviously, Japan and standout player. Um, I'll say Japan. And standout player for this week would be. God, this one is hard. There's so many picks. So. I'm going to go with. Tanaka of Japan too. Okay, yeah. Forgetting that important goal. Cool. I'm just being solid in the middle. Thanks. Eliminate? Yeah. Um it's it's hard to look beyond the Japan team right now. Um 
I think a really good shout is um, Thon. I think stand out in the sense where just when his team needed him the most in extra time, you know, or not extra time, but like added time, um, very close to the end, you know, one decisive break was a very key pass, very beautifully weighted. And I know he didn't like wasn't the one that scored it, but he definitely did a lot of the heavy lifting, I would say, in regards to his session of that goal. So mm, I, I don't, I'm trying to go like against the grain to get to like, give like another Japanese player because they were, you know, amazing in their last game. Um, but I'll just say Son just because of that like last minute contribution. Yeah. Makar? Um, I think Japan was a stand up team. Players, though, I. I don't, I can't think of, I'm struggling with this one, one that stood out. Um, this might be a little problematic, but I'm going to go with Marcus Rashford scoring a brace, albeit against Wales. I think that might be good enough for him to start over like Raheem Sterling um, against Senegal. Yeah. That's not so bad. No, it's not a bad pick. I mean, they no, that's actually, actually, yeah, that's the best of mine. I, I agree with that pick, like, wholehearted. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I'm going to say Japan is a standout team, but I'm going to go a bit against the grain, more or less go to Mikhail, because if Spain did their job, we'll be talking about this guy right now, and that's Kai Havertz, because, like, he scored two important goals for Germany, and mm. he almost dragged them over the line to qualify, so that's I think he's like possibly the outstanding player this week. And he's also works. winner of the most depressing like <laughs> match winning <laughs> trophy picture of I think I've ever seen. Yeah. There have been there have been three where their team won, but the players are just not smiling at all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Oscar is just loving the fact that half of the Bayern Munich team is just going home. No, it's not really because of Bayern Munich. Actually, that's a good point. <laughs> but it's just the fact, you guys remember I told you guys last week that my brothers can't shut about Musiala and everything. And they always trying to, because they're anti-Barcelona. So I was like, I hope Musiala is enjoying his Lufthansa flight tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read, man, I don't think I've laughed this much in a long time with all of the <laughs> exits and everything. Yeah, yeah I sure. mean, like, but he Mueller, one. He, all jokes aside, Musiala is ridiculous. No, Musiala is a very good player. Like he, he's the only besides Havertz in last game. He's the only like good thing about Germany in this World Cup. Yeah, he's, so, he's such a special player. Like yeah, yeah. sure, and for the season with Bayern, he might start the last lap. Although they they are playing against PSG, so maybe he might be set for an early shower there as well. <laughs> It's, it's such a shame because I think he could have, you know, bust on the scene the way Mbappe did, you know, the mm-hmm. last World Cup, like if Germany progressed to show yeah. us because he was definitely there. Apart from like Cahavas scored the goals, but in terms of most impactful in a way, or if yeah. I don't know, the, like threatening, I would say, we see how that definitely. Yeah, like there's something about him, right? Like against Costa Rica. A lot of German players, when they lost the 50-50, they just walk away from it. But this guy, he never gives up. So to have that determination on top of this quality and that makes him special, is he's definitely going to the top, you know? Yeah. And once he gets those Bayern like, genes to, like, grow muscles, like, he'll be unstoppable. <laughs> oh, God, he'll be unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, do you all think England missed out on a big... For sure. Because, yeah. yeah but- but then again, given that it's England, they'd probably not even pick him in the first place. <laughs> like, look how long it took them to start Bellingham. Yeah. Mason Mount, yeah. M- Mason Mount would just be getting out of the games as usual. Even Foden now, it is kind of, I mean, I, I'm impartial to England. It is kind of crazy, though, that he's not one of the first names on the sheet. Hmm. Yeah. The thing with a lot of the England forwards is that they're good for their club, but then in when they 
when they play for your country, they're not as good. And then it doesn't help that the manager is too quick to bench you if you don't perform mm -hmm. up to his standard. But if you're Foden or Sterling, you know, you don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, reminds me of a certain time in England at stack midfield, but the same things were happening, like Gerard, Lampard, Skulls, all at, all at once. And they never could get that off the ground. Yeah, the, the one player that could have helped give balance to that whole team was Carrick, but they were like, no, nah, he's not English enough. <laughs> we need people that run around like Declan Rice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I was going to say, like, in regards to, I mean, the only player that I think is confirmed on the team sheets every week is Harry Kane, Harry Kane. then everyone else just kind of gets built up from there. But uh, to, to that point about the midfield, um, yeah, um, I know Scholes wasn't really a dynamic player, so he probably stayed behind most of the time. You know, Lampard tried to build the transition, but I don't think, I don't know, I don't know. England, I just feel as well, in defense against France, they'll struggle. It might be like a, you know, punch, you know, kind of knockout fight. And like I said, I just think France just have better, like, heavy hitters than uh, England do, especially, you know, on the form right now, I would say. So, yeah. Okay, so before I let you guys go, now that we all know the path to the final, who do you guys think is going to be the final and who's going to win it? Starting with you, Eliminate. That's not fair. Why did I go first? Black person speak. Ah, um, geez. Because it's gonna be what? Well, um, uh, potentially, if my picks are correct, France, Argentina in the semi-finals. Oh no! no. Fr France, Portugal in the semi-final. Ah, yeah, the sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah the other way around. Yeah, so. Yeah, France, Portugal, and then Brazil, Argentina. Jeez. I think the, the, the most entertaining spectacle would be France-Brazil final. Yeah. Um, the one that everyone, like, history wants to see is Argentina-Portugal, obviously. But uh, just because of the, I think, I don't know if you guys would agree, like, people would probably want to see Messi against Ronaldo more than Argentina against, uh, well, I guess they'll face Brazil in the semifinal anyway. But uh, yeah. uh, but I guess I'm just gonna go go um, Brazil, France, it's final. France. Oh mm -hmm. my God, you're you're going against Portugal. Yeah, I mean, it's just. I want I want Portugal to to go there, but when I was hearing Mikel speak as well about Switzerland, and I was just like, he is right. It's like, <laughs> team, um, apart from the last game where they were kind of throwing caution to the wind, relatively, when they play like disciplined football, when they know okay, we have to like, you know, play to like win sort of thing and like be focused. It can be dangerous, but. Okay, you know what? I'm going to go on my chest. I'm going, I'm going on my chest. It's <laughs> Brazil Portugal final. Brazil Portugal final and Portugal yeah, to win. I'm going on my chest. Portugal to win. Yeah. I'm Cristiano going uh, scores in the 95th minute. We get the winner. Yeah, did he just, you know, yeah. does, he, does it the only way he can that pisses off everyone? Penaldo. And then he's <laughs> <people, laughs> the sort of thing. And it's just amazing. <laughs> And then your alarm goes off and you're like, oh, no. Now <laughs> <laughs> that nightmare is over. Yeah. Oscar. <laughs> um, okay. You guys know at this point, I want an Argentina Spain final more than yeah. any team. But, okay. I can see Spain getting to the semifinal and losing to France because France, like Olomide said, have more game winners than Spain. On the other hand, I can see an Argentina Brazil semi final, which will be very tight. But I'll say Argentina do enough to take it to penalties and win, because I feel that game will go all the way. France Spain can go either way, honestly. It depends on Spain's ability to finish off chances, which they will create, because France. I'm going to go contrary to what a lot of people think. I don't think France-Brazil will be a good final because France are 
a terrorism team in disguise. <laughs> now, in France, if they want to shut a game down and just hit you from set pieces and counter attacks, they'll do it. So I'm going to say Argentina, France final, as much as I want it to be an Argentina Spain final. And I knew it was a messy recap. Uh, Messi will win and Mbappe will get so angry he goes to Real Madrid in the January transfer window because he doesn't want to see Messi again. Then you get a slap from your little brother and you're like, oh, so it was all a dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, that's the dream, but the reality is it's coming home to Spain. It's coming to Spain. Mm-hmm. Number two, <laughs> Dos. <laughs> dos Mundial is coming. Yeah, Mikhail, you're, you're a level headed guy who doesn't take sides in this. I'm a church Messi Ronaldo debates. Like, give us your, your prediction. I think Brazil have some issues with injuries that are a big question mark. I think if Neymar isn't healthy by the semifinals, I don't think they'll be able to beat Argentina, despite the fact that whoever they'll play there, whether they go with a Fred, the guest in the middle field. Or with Rodrigo, I just I just think Neymar. You need some a player like that um, against what looks to be a good Argentina team. I mean, the tactical switches they made in the the game against Poland, I think, just balances them out really well. Where it's Messi isn't playing behind Martinez, meaning that there's this. You know, Julian Alvarez is now like wide, so that structure is just better. I think Argentina have enough to get to the final. And I actually think on the other end of the bracket, I think Spain actually will probably end up making the final. Oh, see, interesting. <laughs> see, I, I'm not a madman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they, they, I think, in a way, losing to Japan not only is good that they avoid Brazil and Argentina. But I think it's also a, kind of a wake-up call, essentially, mm-hmm. to Luis Enrique that, you know, I, you know, I can't do the little sort of tactical switches that I like to do as much. Maybe that Don't result- like Pep Guardiola. Don't know for sure. Yeah, that. yeah. I, so far, I mean, the formula for them has been good. It's just they kind of just switched off for like a good ten minutes, right? Just concede. Yeah. To two goals, but yeah, I like this guy's language. So, so Spain, Argentina, who wins that one? I think Argentina, wins. Argentina. Okay, so mm-hmm. we have two Argentinas, we have one Portugal. I'm oh. going to go with the people's final, France, Brazil, repeat of 98, but this time France wins again. <laughs> yeah. I know it's it's like it's pretty obvious. It's pretty like lame dad. So hopefully it doesn't come true. But yeah. that's what that's what my heart's telling me. Not my heart, my head. So what does your heart want? My heart wants Spain Argentina final. See, well, 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 almost all in agreement. How how do you not want to see Messi versus Ronaldo? Because I don't want to have to spend ninety minutes. <laughs> Thinking about the worst possible outcome, <laughs> but like a, a Messi Ronaldo final is the same reason why I'm sure a lot of Liverpool fans will won't want to Liverpool United final or Real Madrid fans will want to Real Madrid Barcelona final in the Champions League because you know whatever happens is going to be the worst. It's too, it's, it's too much of a risk. <laughs> this is winner takes all, yeah. rightly or wrongly. Like I don't believe one game should decide what you think of a player's whole 50-year career, oh, but oh, oh. we are in the social media era, so it's going to. So yeah, yeah but that that's just what you just said, right? It could happen, but that isn't that like that. The significance alone <laughs> that is just like it's it's. <laughs> No, it's, it's Louis, a Hollywood Louis, final, but it's but. a Hollywood final. But are you going to be that? Are you, is it going to be box office for you? Or is it going to be a flop for you? Yeah. It's too, no. especially <laughs> if it comes down to a penalty shootout. Oh God! Oh no, that would be the worst thing ever. If it goes to penalty, I, 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 I would, I would literally just. If it goes to, no, but if it goes to penalty and Ronaldo doesn't get to take the fifth penalty, that would just be so. <laughs> 
<laughs> that would be so unfair. Oh my god, this, this is, like there'll be so many fights. <laughs> this Honestly, I, I'll rather both teams not make it. <laughs> Honestly, like yeah, I've, it, it, like, it, that final so is too toxic to exist. Yeah, the build up to it, the insults, everything, the yeah. aftermath. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. I think about like football, as opposed to like American sports, where it's one bite of the cherry. There's no okay, I'll get you back. It's what, how you kick this ball now. You know, like how you perform now in ninety minutes that defines, you know, the your legacy and that sort of thing. And Argentina, uh, Portugal would be. I think it would be too much. I think we literally, my heart's like, am I not? Even- <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we all, no, no one is going to survive this. Not even. New, um, pro, self-acclaimed neutrals because <laughs> <laughs> we all live one way or another somehow yeah 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 and with that i'm going to thank you all for coming again and i think we're all in agreement we don't want to see an argentina portugal final not at all <laughs> not at all and thanks for listening guys have a good one